Hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. Hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. To get myself back into my regular vlogging schedule, I'm usually a week out. This vlog is going to be a special one, a little bit of a different one. But come back next Sunday because I will have a proper vlog for you from this week. But for now, for this week's vlog, I'm going to take you through a condensing unit replacement on a catering truck that we did a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, a few months ago now, time is flying. I did include it in my vlog that week, but I, I condensed it, I made it really small so that I could, in this vlog, extend it and talk about the whole job. So I hope you enjoy. So the catering truck is located at the owner's home, which is in this beautiful setting back here. And he does lots of movie sets, so check this out. Check this out. Oh, Ooh, it's kind of creepy. This is apparently from the movie set of The Night at the Museum. Cool. So the guy wasn't there, so he just left everything open for us and we let ourselves in. Just taking a look at the old condensing unit, it sounds really, really bad. <laughs> it's really old. Just gonna stare at it for a second. Here's our new baby inside the box. So shiny and beautiful. We're just gonna double check that it's gonna fit in that spot, but it does for sure. These are all the components that we've bought extra. There's our filter dryer, our sight glass, got a solenoid valve, and a solenoid coil. We're gonna start by recovering all of the old refrigerant. So I've just brought over the recovery machine and a cylinder. We're gonna dispose of this refrigerant. We're not gonna put it back in. We're gonna start with fresh virgin refrigerant once we're done. The new unit is in that box, so we're just bringing it over to our workspace. And poor Trev was having some shoulder issues, some collarbone issues that day, so he was off heavy-handed duties. So while the recovery machine is doing its thing, I'm just kind of sussing out what needs to be done on the old unit, starting with disconnecting all of the electrical. And there's just a bunch of wire nuts in there, just got to disconnect all of them and, uh, and pull that wire through. Easy peasy, comes right out. Just like that. Okay, all of our electrical has been disconnected. I'm just gonna shove it on the top there. It's gonna come out all in one piece. So we'll just stash that right there. And uh, we're gonna pull off the solenoid valve or the solenoid coil rather. Just gonna let that lie down. And now the fun part of trying to get this thing off of its bracket. Those screws are so rusty. It was almost a three person job here. We got some WD-40 and some elbow grease. And because they were so old and rusty, we just wanted to make sure that they didn't snap off in that bracket. So we're just being very careful. Dad's holding the, um, the nut on the bottom and I'm turning the screw on the top. It was a lot easier for me to go from the bottom, but then I was left alone, so I took a little rest. <laughs> This time Trevor's holding the screw and I'm I'm doing the nut. Okay, that one's done. Okay. Done. Okay, now we can get rid of this old ass unit. <laughs> get it right out of there. And there she is. Definitely seen better days. All right, we got a nice clean spot for our new unit. Let's bring her over and carefully put her onto that bracket. Easy does it. But unfortunately, once we'd got this back, or once we'd got it onto the bracket, we noticed this. All right, so we're just a little bit concerned about that. Don't 
doesn't look like a full kink. You gotta remember that's LP control though. So when that doesn't sense LP properly, it doesn't shut the machine off, and that's the reason why the machine could destroy itself again. And it's so tiny. The tiniest kink is gonna be a problem. If you had a tiny kink like that on a big pipe like this, no problem. Probably okay. Yeah, exactly. But a kink like that on a capillary tube? A brand new capillary though. Come on, baby. So we're gonna roll with it anyway and see what happens. So now we're just gonna make some measurements to get the right pipe sizes. And I really enjoy watching my dad cut and bend pipe. I think it's such a cool skill to have and I really hope that I get it one day as well. We've gotta go from this little connection to fr from right there to this pipe up there. My dad with his old school benders. It's so precise and so perfect. It's so fun to watch, I love it. <laughs> All right, so we've got the pipe in place. Now we're just putting on the, um, the inf insulation. And we have this little trick where once the insulation has been put on, we use a pipe cutter to hold it back so that we can braise without burning that Armaflex. The suction line is all brazed in. Now we're gonna do the liquid line. Also just making some measurements so we can include the solenoid valve, which is right here. We've got this old solenoid coil, which I'm actually gonna remove and wire in a new coil, because we have it. We want all new components. Some more pipe bending. This one's, I think this one's just a quarter. It's so cute. It's so perfect. Another measurement. Now I'm going to use this perma wrap tape by New Calgon. It's just like an insulation foam. And we're just going to put that around the filter dryer just for a little bit of protection. Now that all that pipe work's done, I'm gonna get started on the electrical. So I'm just gonna snip off that, that plug, separate all of the wires, and wire them in. I had a hard time finding a place for this stupid light. <laughs> it's not awkward at all. There we go. It's a little bit tricky working under this truck, but I'm small enough to, uh, to sit upright with my legs out. So I'm just connecting all of the wires now. Unfortunately, I had to use the wire nuts that, that were there before. I tried to use a Wago, but we had too many wires going into them. So just finishing up that wiring there. Making new connections nice and clean. And now I'm wiring in the new solenoid coil. And right here, I'm just adding a little rubber grommet to the side of it so that the wires don't chafe through. But of course, I'm struggling. It's a tiny little rubber ring. And I finally got it. Beautiful. I'm so proud of everything that I do. Just getting rid of that old solenoid coil. And there she is. Garbage. Get the new one wired in as well. Just snipping off the ends there so I can make new connections, beautiful connections. And wire nutting them in. And a cool, interesting angle for you guys. And now it's time for a nitrogen pressure test to make sure we have no leaks. Unfortunately, we did find a leak, so we're just gonna pinpoint that with our soapy solution from New Calgon. We've got some bubbles, unfortunately. So we're just gonna take care of that by redoing the flare connection. Trevor's redone it already. It looks a lot better than the one before. And sometimes that just happens. 
So reconnect everything and we're going to re-pressure test and re-leak test. Okay, great success. We've passed our pressure test. So now we are just charging her up with refrigerant and we're going to use our digital sniffer as a last resort for another leak test. Now that we've got refrigerant in the system, this digital sniffer will be able to pick that up if there's anything leaking out. But luckily, we're all clear. Right. Three, two, one. When this unit first came out of the box, I was marveling at these access fittings, or these access ports, like they're so neat and beautiful. But now, look how difficult it is to get our, our uh, gauges off. There's so little space to move. We use this tiny little adjustable wrench and it was still kind of difficult. There we go. And that's pretty much a wrap. And we're done. Beautiful. There she is. It's closing up before we leave. And bye. Well, that's it for this job. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the HVAC Diaries HVAC Vlog, Condensing Unit Replacement Edition. See you guys next week for a proper vlog. Looking forward to it.